Rosaria is a 4 star pole arm wielder and holder of a cryo vision. This non skills, talents, and character progression traits may land her as player's main or sub DPS. Here's what you need to know about this sister's characters, skills, talents, possible weapons to wield, and potential teammates in this guide. I'm JJ, and here are the things you need to know if you're preparing to roll for Rosaria. At the time this video was made and uploaded, there is only one other 4 star pole arm user in the game, which is Xiang Ling. So it should be fair to compare Rosaria with the daughter of the one main restaurant's owner in terms of their attacks and damage outputs. Rosaria's base attack is slightly higher than Jiang Ling's, with the former having a maximum base attack of 240 while the latter at 225. Rosaria's base defense is also slightly higher at 710 with Jiang Ling at 669. This means that this nun that's not quite interested in being a nun can hit slightly harder and tank better than Jiang Ling. Rosaria increases her attack percent rate for each ascension after the second. Jiang Ling, on the other hand, increases her elemental mastery. At this point, it should be fair to assume that Rosaria can become a heavy hitter for the party. That heavy hitter status is further cemented by looking at her normal attack talent. With the level 6 normal attack talent, Rosaria attacks with 76.25% of her normal attack strike, unlike Xiang Ling who only does 61.13%. Rosaria's charge attack damage at level 6 is also higher at 198.75% of attack, while Xiang Ling has 176.88%. As for Rosaria's required ascension materials, she needs Shivada Jade Fragments, Chunks, and Gemstones as well as Horfrost Cores, Fatui Insignias, and Volberries. With these materials, players who wish to try and ascend Rosaria to max at the time they get her may have little to no problem ascending her as these items are fairly common in the game. Rosaria's elemental skill is called Ravaging Confession, which deals 2 hits of cryo damage to enemies. The first hit allows her to pass through small to medium sized enemies, but she can't pass through large enemies like Lava Churls and Ruin Guards. This skill is quite fast as it only has a 6 second cooldown, which means players may spam this skill several times during battles. In contrast, Jia's elemental skill lasts for 10 seconds. Although this 5 star and emo character starts with 2 charges for the skill. Her elemental burst is called Rites of Termination which also hits for 2 hits, but the cryo lance generated will remain on the field for 8 seconds, creating damage over time with the same element to enemies. The energy requirement for Rosaria's burst is 60 which is decent. Other 4 star characters that have the same energy requirement are Kaya, Fischl, and Noel. To level up her talents, players would need to farm Fatui Insignias, Bala Talent Books, and Shadows of the Warrior from the Weekly Child Boss Fight. As for her passive talents, the first one is called Night Walk, which increases movement speed by everyone in the party by 10% from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in game time. Next is Regina Probationum, which boosts Rosaria's crit rate by 12% for 5 seconds if she manages to pass through her opponent with her elemental skill. The last passive skill is called Shadow Samaritan, which increases the crit rate of all party members but Rosaria by 15% of Rosaria's crit rate for 10 seconds upon casting her burst. However, this bonus will not exceed 15%. For example, Rosaria has a crit rate of 50%. Upon casting her burst, she gives an additional 7.5% crit rate to her party members. With her skills, talents, and passive talents, Rosaria's abilities are somewhere in the middle between a main and sub DPS. Therefore, players have the flexibility to build her for either role without significant compromises. Players may also want to prioritize her normal attacks if they're going for a physical damage build before moving to her elemental skill and burst. But if players want to take advantage of her cryo damage, then her elemental burst might be taken into priority before moving to her elemental skill and finally for her normal attack talent. Like her passive talents, Rosaria's constellations are also crit rate inclined. Constellation 1 increases her attack speed and damage for every time she scores a critical hit. Constellation 2 increases the duration of her burst by 4 seconds. Constellation 3 increases the level of her elemental skill by 3. Constellation 4 regenerates 5 energy for Rosaria each time her elemental skill gains a critical hit, but this effect can only be activated once each cast. Constellation 5 increases the level of her burst by 3. Finally, Constellation 6 decreases her enemy's physical resistance when they get hit by her elemental skill. Rosaria's constellation are quite selfish, seeing that most of her constellations are for her and her alone. Her constellation 6 may provide some utility for other physical damage dealers like Zinyan and Razor, but it's a very niche trait to have. Some players may want to limit their fate expenditures in rolling for Rosaria if they don't want her to be in the main DPS role, but for the players that want Rosaria to be their main DPS, the buffs from her constellations can give her a significant advantage in the battlefield. Weapon selection for Rosaria is quite plenty as she can greatly benefit from many pole arms in the game. The Staff of Homa is the first on the list because of its superb stats and effect. Plus, Rosaria has a decent max HP of 4 a 4 star character, so the boost in damage from this weapon will be more than welcome. Another option is a Skyward Spine, albeit the Vacuum Blade effect tends to be only a nice little bonus. But the increase in energy recharge means Rosaria can spam her 
elemental burst more frequently, and the increasing crit rate and normal attack speed grants this nun more chances to increase the crit rate of her and her party via her elemental skill and burst. Zhao's signature weapon, the Primordial Jade Wing Spear, is also a great choice since it enhances the wielder's crit rate and attack percent. For the 4 star weapons, the Dragon Spine Spear is a great free to play choice. Players can get this spear for free from doing one of the Dragon Spine quests, and the boost in physical damage should increase Rosara's damage even further. Also, the damage from the icicle that forms from the weapon is increased when enemies are affected by Cryo, which pairs nicely with this Cryo Vision wielder. Next up is the Favonius Lance, which offers more chances for players to use her burst with the bountiful amount of elemental particles generated. Then there's the Prototype Star Glitter, which is another good option for free to play players. It does offer a nice boost in normal attack and charge attacks and energy recharge. But the Crescent Pike might be a better option for free to play Rosaria players. Speaking of Crescent Pike, this craftable pole arm has the same secondary stat as the Dragon Spine Spear. Aside from the boost in physical damage, this pole arm boosts the normal attack and charge attack damage of the wielder by 20% for 5 seconds each time the wielder picks up an elemental orb or particle. If players are willing to spend a little, then the Battle Pass's Deathmatch can also be a great weapon for Rosaria. This weapon boosts the wielder's crit rate and increases the wielder's attack depending on the number of opponents nearby. The more enemies nearby, the lesser the damage dealt. Another weapon acquired from spending real money is the Black Cliff Pole, which appears sometimes in Paimon Shop. This weapon increases the wielder's crit damage through its secondary stat. It also increases the attack for an additional 12% for the wielder for a reasonably long 30 seconds, although Rosaria will need to kill an enemy for the effect to activate. Finally, the new players may take advantage of the 3 star white tassel, as the excellent boost in normal attack damage and crit rate may help them plow through early game content before they get better pole arms. Possible team compositions for Rosaria are plenty with that I might make a separate video for it. Still, here are some examples. Players can opt for a permafrost team with Rosaria, Kaya, or Ganyu, Zinchu, and Bennett for the extra damage. Kaya, Ganyu, and Rosaria are cryo vision wielders, which means there is going to be an additional 15% crit rate for frozen or cryo affected characters. Another possible team composition is one with a continuous melt structure with Rosaria and Jiang Ling. Players would need to activate both characters' burst for frequent melt reactions until both skills disappear. Some players may also take advantage of any of the game's two GU vision wielders for that GU resonance effect. For example, a team with Rosaria, Zhongli, Noel, and Chongyun can improve Rosaria's crit rate and damage. Unlike other characters like Hu Tao and Zhao that may need specific teammates to maximize their damage outputs, Rosaria can fit in just about any party, especially if players want to take advantage of her cryo and crit rate abilities. Players may want to take advantage of a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer set or a mix of a 2-piece Bloodstained Chivalry with 2 pieces from the Blizzard Strayer set depending on the type of build. The 4-piece Blizzard Strayer set is ideal for players who wish to take advantage of Rosaria's cryo abilities frequently. Otherwise, the two-piece Bloodstained and two-piece Blizzard Strayer should be a more flexible choice in more scenarios. As for the artifact substats, players may prioritize on attack for the sands, physical or cryo damage bonus for the goblet, and crit rate or crit damage for the circlet. Overall, Rosaria can fit in many team compositions as a sub DPS or a carry support role. It is also possible to make her into a main DPS if built with the right weapons and artifacts. She can support her teammates by providing extra crit rate and cryo damage or become a powerhouse main damage dealer. As always, don't let others discourage you into wishing for Rosaria if you really want to pull for her. Use your hard-earned fates for her if you really want her to be in your character roster, regardless of the reason. If you want to pull for her because you like her personality or character design, then go for it. With everything that said, I hope that the game's RNG blesses your role so you can add Rosaria to your team. As always, I'm JJ and I'll see you in the next one.